If you were a teenager in the 80s, this might be your bedroom. These might be your walls. This might be your television. And like many teens of the decade, you'd have wanted one thing very, very badly. When Kuntaj was launched, it was like to see a rocket and not a car. If you were a celebrity, if a financier, if you were somebody building companies, artists, this is the car that you had to have. Very aggressive, very unique, very polarizing. The Kunta was the logical evolution of the Miura. A shocking new set of proportions, surface, line work, just defied everything that went before. It looks like it's moving and the car's shut off. Silhouette, proportion, and those lines are for me creating a Lamborghini. Ma mi verrebbe da rispondere perché non è stato fatto niente di meglio dopo. Is the Lamborghini Countach for everyone, for every driver, for everyone who can afford it? No, I think uh, it's a, a special car for special people. Is there such a thing as a typical Lamborghini purchaser, a typical owner? Yes, very large ego. Lamborghini has an ego. Dare your ego. Free your ego. They market it. Tractors are named after it and one-off concept cars. They even have an ego driving mode. But the ego that Lamborghini wears so proudly isn't rooted in victories on the racetrack or world speed records, but rather in severity, angularity, and aggression. Something Lamborghini refers to as the Gandini line created by none other than famed designer Marcello Gandini, the same man who brought us cars like these. But before razor-sharp edges and scissor doors, performance cars looked more like this. Jaguar is a special breed of car. If you think about cars going back, particularly to the 50s and 60s, they were big on the front and trailing off to the rear. Try the 65 Corvette. They were very soft, organic forms. It's quite a different design language. And then a car would come along that would upend everything. Nell'inizio novembre del 1965, tutto lo staff Lamborghini fu in visita alla Bertone per vedere se Bertone poteva essere interessato a dare un vestito a questo telaio che era stato presentato a Torino. Dovuto poi essere la Miura. And while in form, the Miura would look like other performance cars of its time, under the sheet metal, a revolution had occurred. At the time, all the winning racing car already had the engine behind the driver. All the high performance car manufacturers were still producing car with the engine in front. And so I told Mr. Lamborghini why we do not make a car with rear engine. And Mr. Lamborghini immediately said yes. Do it. Immediately. Yeah, do it. And with the engine out of the way, meant the front could go lower and lower and lower till we arrived at what is often referred to as the wedge. Siamo in questo caso con la cara Bon 68 si è un po' dimenticato queste forme più gradevoli all'occhio per cose molto più più dure, un po' estrema. The forward-looking design embodied in this experiment on wheel. These forms, before Gandini and others got a hold of them, had mostly existed in the aeronautical world, model competitions, and science fiction. Now it had become the automotive trend of the 70s. Turn the engine longitudinal, push the driver away forward, back to the early, you know, the fighter plane reference where the canopy is forward and this long tail, all that power back there pushing the capsule where the pilot is, I mean, that's the imagery. And the Countach was the ultimate expression of the wedge. The Gandini line was explored in the late 60s and 70s by different Italian cars, but the one that you could buy that was realized was the Countach. Tant'è vero che la Countach non è stata accettata immediatamente, mentre era stata accettata subito la Miura, che aveva non era così dura, così violenta. <laughs> If also today you see our car, you see that you can identify so many lines of the Countach, and this really is a kind of message that we receive from Gandini. 
the car was able to shock an entire generation of people that really identify the dreaming to see something, what can be the future of a super sport car. And that future, whether in green, yellow, black, red, or white, is what the world now knows as the first modern supercar.